so worthy to be praised on this morning. He is so worthy to be praised. He deserves it all. Let's not hold any of it back. For he deserves it all. We serve a good, good father. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's get our sword and proclaim our, wor- our faith, faith confession over the word on this morning. Amen. Hold up your Bible high. Amen. And repeat after me. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says that I can do. Today, I will be taught the uncompromised word of God. I boldly confess I am a doer, not just a hearer. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am the head and not the tail. I am the victor. I am the victor and not the victim. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And there is nothing, there is absolutely no thing the devil can do about it. Now shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I want to welcome you that are visiting us on Facebook or on YouTube. We appreciate your visits on this morning. We ask that if you are get, being blessed by this ministry, that you like and share it so others can be blessed as well. For we have an awesome word for you on this morning. Just sit back, start sharing now so others can come and share with you on this morning. We're See the Faith International in Raytown, Missouri, right outside of Kansas City, Missouri. Our senior pastor is Dr. Herman Scales, and we have a fabulous first lady, Dr. Myra Scales. If you're ever in the Kansas City area, please come by and visit us. There is nothing like an in-person service here at See the Faith International at 9301 East 87th Street. Amen. So thank you again for joining us on this morning. So last week we began talking about honoring the gift. We all received gifts for Christmas from our loved ones and our friends and family. And in some way, we needed to show appreciation for that gift. Maybe we did it with a hug, a smile, or maybe as children we did a little bit of extra because we know that when you show your appreciation for that thing that you receive, that person that gave it to you recognizes that appreciation and is willing and excited to give you more. Amen? Amen. Isn't that just like God? That is just like God. We got it from him. We are wired that way. He gave me a word on this morning that we came preloaded. You ever buy a game system, gamers? It already comes preloaded with some stuff. Amen? Amen. You buy a new computer, that cell phone, it's already preloaded with some stuff. Amen? Amen. That vehicle you have, it's already preloaded with some stuff. Amen? It didn't get, you didn't get the vehicle and then you have to get an add-on for an accelerator. And you got to get an add-on for a radio. No, it came preloaded with some stuff. You came preloaded with some stuff. Amen? And that stuff you came preloaded with came from the Almighty God. Amen? Because in James it tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Amen? So we know that we are already preloaded with some stuff. Amen? In 2 Peter Chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. That sounds like preloaded. Wow. You are already preloaded to the, for the divine purpose that God has placed you here in this earth realm. Amen. Because God, when he created you, it says in Jeremiah, he knew you before you was even formed in your mother's womb. He already knew you. He already loaded you up and put you in the place that you are now, already prepared 
and able with the abilities, the character, all of the things that you needed to do what? Give God glory. Yeah. We are only here to give him glory in the earth realm. We're not here to accumulate a lot of stuff. That's one of the benefits. But we're here to give him glory in our sphere of influence, whatever that thing is that you can do. And every one of us that came here was on assignment. Everyone that came here was on assignment. Our responsibility is find out what that is. Not to go create one, but to discover that, what it is that we are here to be doing for the work of the ministry. Amen? Yeah. And how do we do that? Through the knowledge of who God is. Yeah. Where do we find out who God is? In his word. Amen. Basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible will tell you about his character. It will tell you about his hopes for you his promises to you, his commitment to you, amen? Because it says he loves us, he is jealous for us. His love is like a hurricane, it's like awesome. We can't even fathom it. The words to the song just gives us a little tiny glimpse because we can't even fathom the massiveness of what it means to be loved by God. Amen. So he puts it in words and he allows songwriters to put it in words so that we can at least get a glimpse of it. We have a glimpse of what a mansion looks like. And 90% of the country don't live in a mansion, amen? But we have dreams of what a mansion would look like. So in the word, it tells us that he's going to prepare a place for us, amen? And where he goes, we can come too. He's going to give us mansions, amen? Now, does it look like something in Beverly Hills? Not even close. We can't even imagine. It's better than the Hamptons, amen? It's nothing like the south of France. We can't even imagine how good God has prepared that place for us to dwell if we dwell in him, amen? So he said that he has brought us here in this earth realm and already preloaded us with the abilities, the gifts and talents and abilities to give him glory. So what do I mean when I say honoring the gift? Because that's what this series is talking about, honoring the gift. In the context of this message, honoring the gift means to highly value. Highly value your gifts, which represents your talents and your abilities. By using them as an investment vehicle that expands the kingdom of God. Amen? is to highly value your gifts, your talents, and your abilities by using them as an investment vehicle that expands the kingdom of God. See, there is a difference between investing and storing away. There is a difference between investing and storing away. And the Lord says that if you give, he'll give you more, right? How do you get more? By giving it away. That sounds weird. I'm going to have more. If I give you all that I have, I'll have more. That doesn't sound quite right, right? It's like if I give you, I have this little bit, and if I give it over to the Lord, I'll have more. It doesn't sound mathematically correct, right? But in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, it says, this is from the Lord, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are my ways, says the Lord. For as heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God desires for each and every one of us to increase, individually and collectively. He didn't expect you to come here with this and leave with this. Amen? He wants you to increase. And the only way you're going to increase is by giving away and investing in others. Amen. Not in yourself. He wants you to give to others, not store it away so you can have some, the same that you started with. Amen? No, he wants you to take what you have and give it away that puts you in position to receive more. Because you have an attitude of gratitude. Lord, I thank you that you gave me this two-bedroom apartment. Oh, you excited about that? 
Well, Sally over there in the three-bedroom house, and she's mumbling and complaining because the heater needs to be fixed, and the air conditioning is like that, and Susie got a new refrigerator, and I don't have a new refrigerator. I've been wanting a new refrigerator, but you and your two-bedroom apartment just got a four-bedroom house because you was appreciative. Yeah. He just opened up that window. It's like, you appreciate that two-bedroom apartment? Let me move you up a little higher. And Sally's still over there complaining, like, I want some new furniture. I want a new refrigerator. But when you have that attitude of grat gratitude, and as you serve others, you'll see the doors open up. <laughs> doors that you don't even know exist will open up for you. Because the Lord knows, well, I can trust her with that. She was on the bus stop. And while she was on the bus stop, she was giving money to the kid that didn't have enough money to catch the bus. So guess what? She got a vehicle in line. That's how God works. He sees how much you appreciate the little that you have. He said those that are, are faithful over the little, he'll make you rulers over much. He didn't say you could just look at it. He said he'll make you rulers over much. Amen? So when we talk about increase, increase requires you to invest. And investment means it's going to leave your hands and go into someone else's hand. Is that what investment is? Yeah. Amen? You can't invest and hold on to it and store it away. We have a scripture about that. Amen? In Matthew 25, 14 through 30, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It says, but it starts in verse 14. It says, for the kingdom of heaven, this is telling you, this is how God operates. Whenever you see the kingdom of heaven, it's telling you what is the spiritual principle, what God looks at. He said, it's like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, another in two, and one, another one one. To each according to their own ability. Amen. Amen. You're preloaded for whatever that thing is that God has already put inside of you. Yeah. Amen? So you are maybe a five talent. Amen? You may be a two talent. Amen? But whatever that talent is, God gave it to you. You didn't create it. Amen. It was given by him, and he expects it to increase. Amen? So he has given all these talents to these individuals. And then when he came back um, in verse 20, he came back, he said, so to the one that received the five talents, when the master came back and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more. That sounds like increase. Yeah. And the Lord said to him, well done. How many of you want a well done in your biography? <laughs> Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He just got in position to get more. God's a God of multiplication, amen? So he may not just add another five, amen? He might have got 25 because five times five is 25, amen? That's better than five plus five plus five being 15, amen? But he said, enter into the joy of the Lord. He also had received the two talents, came and said, Lord... You delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. He said, Lord, to him, well done. His Lord said to him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Yes. Well, then there's the one with the one. He received the one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. He stored it away. Amen. Others invested and increased. He stored it away. So what did the Lord say? <laughs> you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I had, you knew all about me. You know what I do, okay? You wasn't a stranger. You know my character. But yet, in verse 27, you ought to have deposited my money with the banker's investment. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Yes. That's the difference between investing 
and storing. We want to invest. Amen. We know we're living in the last and evil days. Amen. No one's surprised about that. We see sin so blatant. We don't even talk about it. So it's like, what did you expect? Of course they're doing that. Of course they're accepting that. It's so norm. It became the norm so much so it doesn't even hit the headlines anymore. Yet we read the end of the book. We are victorious. Amen. He took death and hell and cast it out. Amen. We have the victory over sin, hell, death, and the grave. Amen. So we want to be investors in what God wants us to invest in. And he told us in his word what that is. He didn't tell us to start complaining about the wrongdoers. Amen. He told us to go do what? Go into the highways and the byways. Did he say ask them to come in? He said, compel them to come in. That's a little bit better than asking. Amen. Compel them to come in. I remember a time back in the old days. <laughs> I'm old enough to say back in the old days. <laughs> and I recall the Lord has been really working with me on this topic. Back when I was doing my di dissertation, my thesis was, although salvation is granted to all believers, we believers will be held accountable for the moral decay in this country. We as a believer will be held accountable for the moral decay of this country. The Lord didn't ask us to go out and change their way of thinking. We, they, he asked us to share the gospel with him and the Holy Spirit will change their way of thinking. We are still supposed to change their way of thinking, not our way of thinking, but to the gospel's way of thinking. We are still supposed to go out and share the message of hope that will set the captives free, that will remove burdens, destroy yokes. That is our assignment, not complaining about what other folks are doing. Amen? Not looking at the speck in other folks' eye while we got a big old brick in ours. Amen? We're not supposed to be out condemning others that have fallen short. As Pastor mentioned on this morning, we're supposed to pray for those. If you're so strong, you got it all together, then pray for me and lift me up. Amen? I'm broken, busted, and disgusted. You should have hope, healing, and restoration in your hand. Amen? You're locked and loaded with it already. Did you tap into it? Amen. Did you push that button? It's already in you. All you got to do is flip on the switch. Yeah. It's there. It's all in there. I remember the church in Acts. The church was going from house to house, meeting the needs of the people. The church has changed and transformed and just done a bunch of stuff that we didn't really expect it to do. We didn't expect it, but God already knew. God already knew. He already knew all about it. It says, this is a quote, <clears throat> when the Greeks got the gospel, they turn into a philosophy. When the Romans got it, they turn it into a government. When the Europeans got it, they turn it into a culture. And when America's got it, they turn it into a business. That's where it went to. I remember in the, in, back in the Acts church where they went to house to house to see the needs of the people. You can't really help your sister or brother if you don't know what they have need of. Amen. You can start giving them things and that's not even hitting the socket where they need to be met. Amen. And so we have subjugated at the, as the church, we have redirected our responsibility to our community, to the government. Do you realize 50 years ago, however long ago it was, if you found a homeless child on the street, Mother Johnson would say, baby, I seen this baby on the corner. I picked him up. Can I bring him over to your house? Yeah, mother, bring him over. Sally, can you bring me some soup for this baby? He needs some clothes and some shoes. What do we do now? You see a baby on the, on the street? Mm, there's a baby on the street. Girl, I seen a baby on the street. Bad, he in bad shape. Oh, why don't you call DFS? Oh, could you call him for me? We have redirected.
it our responsibility that God had given to the church to serve the needs of the people, we redirected it to the government. So guess what? We got what we got. We got what we got. We need to go back to the basics and let the church be the church. When we have widows and orphans and homeless and needy and sick and infirm and tired and disgusted and disabled and disillusioned, all those things should be able to come to the church, not to the building, not to the office, but to your home. We are the church, amen? There's churches all over the world. You are one of them. So when that baby's on the street that don't have any way to go, you should be able to have something in your cabinet, in your cabinet that could feed that child, that could help that mother, amen? We should be able to say, oh, baby, let me come over and help you. Why that child coming to the church looking like that? Because that mother needs help. That father needs help. That grandmother needs assistance. There are so many grandmothers and even great-grandmothers now that are taking care of these little babies. Why is that little baby struggling in school? Because grandma only went to third grade, and they're trying to do algebra with Medea. Amen. She don't know nothing about it. Amen. So she's struggling, and she can't help the child. So now the child goes to school and acts up. They call them ADHD. HDDD, whatever those things are. No, the child needs love. The child needs service. The child needs care. The child needs someone to listen to them. And the grandmother needs assistance because she doesn't understand all the technology. Oh, just go on WhatsApp and Google it and do this. Google? What is Google? You tell my grandmother about Google, she's like, is that eyes? What is that? You know? So there is a whole community. We don't have to invent one. We don't have to create one. It's right next door. Amen. They may look like they got it all together. No one has it all together. Everyone has a deficit in some area. If you was on the church text, I sent some questions out this week. And I just wanted to know, what do you have need of? Where can you use assistance? You could be so much better at X if someone would come alongside of you and help you. Amen. What is it that you have to give? What is it that you have to offer? Girl, your house is tore up. Rather than you calling Sally and telling Sally, girl, I went over to uh, June's house and it was jacked up. You should see. They got the rugs out on the, car, on the sidewalk and it ain't been vacuumed. Maybe they don't have the skill set to keep it all together. Maybe you could just take a moment and say, I'm gonna come over and we just gonna chill for a minute. And while you chilling, I'm gonna go organize your pantry. And I'll put things in order for you so you can make it easier for you to get these meals out so you can get to work on time, so your children can get to school on time, so you have some time to get with God and see what he's telling you your next step is. That's ministry. Ministry is not just what you do here, amen, what you do on Sunday morning, amen, but ministry is going out and serving those that have a need. Some of the children wrote back in their, they had an uh, assignment as well as you. I would do better if someone would read the Bible with me. That's awesome. What can you do? You can read the Bible with a young person, amen. You can tell them the story. You can help break down those words. And now they even have a greater help for us. We got the internet. We got YouTube. We got videos. We have workbooks and coloring books. And we got about 70 translations. Amen. So if you don't understand King James and you're trying to explain the sore souls of the word to a four-year-old, get the Message Bible. Get the Amplified. They even have a children's version. There is some way you can meet that need to just listen to a child and tell them the love of Jesus. Amen. That is ministry. It don't have to be in a church. 
It could be on the football field. It could be at the soccer stadium. It could be at the beauty shop while they're getting their nails done and you getting your nails done. Just share with them, baby, your nails look really good. I'm so glad God made provisions for you. Just that little seed sown in that child's life will take them in massive places that they never dreamed of. And guess what? You're already preloaded to do it. Yeah. You're already preloaded yeah. to do it. There's two ways that I want you to think about how you can be on assignment to compel them to come in. Amen? We talked about last week just a little bit about the mother that had a baby, and they wanted to kill all the little boys. So she had a little boy, and she kept that little boy hidden to protect his life. Well, after three months, she couldn't hide him any longer. Amen? So she took that baby and put him in a basket. And she actually put that baby in the basket in a river. Can you imagine that? Taking your baby to save his life and put him in a river? That sounds like you're sending him to the wolves. But how you know God has a plan? Amen? Amen. So in Exodus 2, let's go there real quick. Exodus 2, verse 1. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman. And she, began, she became pregnant and gave birth to her son. When she saw that it was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him no longer, she put him in a basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it in the reeds along the, na- the bank of the Nile River. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it up and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Do you think she's the only one that went to the Nile River? No, but she was already preloaded to look for to have something stand out to her. It was coincidental. She didn't go down there looking for a baby, but inside of her was already the heart to help this child. And so when she went there and found the baby, she immediately didn't call James, say, why don't you go do something with that? Immediately took action. A lot of times we're in a position, coincidentally, we didn't look for the opportunity, but just being in the right place at the right time, a circumstance popped up and we responded in like kind. Yeah. Jesus even said that he saw the need and was moved with compassion. Is he the only one that saw the need? Everybody could see it, amen, just like the Good Samaritan. Everybody saw the person on the side of the road be down, but not everybody was moved with compassion. You're preloaded to see with compassion, to see those things that other people don't see. So why didn't they do it? Because they don't have your eyes. They don't have your heart. They don't have your propensity toward that situation. I might walk down the street and see someone on the side of the road that has a flat tire, and it just means you need to call AAA. Amen? But you come down the road, you already just bought this F-150 that has a jack on it, that has all this fancy equipment. You have that not just for you. You have that to help that person on the side of the road. Do you see it? Do you acknowledge it? Or is that for somebody else to do? I recall a time when my daughter was riding around and her phone was on 1% just enough to call me and tell me she was in danger. Her car had went down 470, down a ditch, I reckon. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. She got 1%. Mama, I'm in this ditch. I was like, hmm, not a whole lot I can do, but I can pray. And do you know that someone came along the highway and captured that car in the ditch and pulled her out. Coincidental. You know how many cars run up and down the highway all day? But when God pricks your ear, you hear something like, oh, turn this way. You don't know why you're turning that way, but God is leading you and guiding you, amen, Amen. to be an answer to somebody's prayer. He said he would guide you with his very own eye. 
So even when you're not thinking about it, the thought comes into your mind. I talk to a lot of people about, how do you know God's talking to you? How do you hear his voice? When God directs you to go a different way. I remember our pastor, a uh, former pastor, he said that God, he was coming to church. He comes to church the same way all the time, all the time, just automatic pilot. The spirit told him, go this direction. Not going that direction. I always go this way. I always go this way. I'm just going to keep going this way. Spirit's like, nope, go this way. Nope, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. Well, guess what? When he went that way, it was a detour. Road was closed. The Spirit is talking to us. We have to ask God, Lord, let me be sensitive to hear your word. Let me be sensitive to hear your voice. You're guiding me. You're directing me all the time. God is speaking to us all the time. Are you listening? Do you see what he sees? But he will guide you into all truth. So this lady was going down to bathe, and she saw this boy. And we know the story of Moses. She was instrumental in that because she heard the voice of the Lord, and she had already preloaded to see this child in the river pull him out to safety. Yeah. That's coincidental. But we want to be intentional. Don't you want to do it on purpose? Yeah. Just on purpose. I go out every day looking like, Lord, what can I do to be the answer to somebody's prayer? Maybe just buy them lunch. Amen. Maybe just share the lunch that I have. Maybe I don't have money to buy them lunch, but I can share because I got too much. I can share with them part of what I already have. Maybe I can just go sit at the barbershop and just see who has a need. Maybe there's someone in there with a need at the grocery store that don't have enough money to pay for their meal. That's ministry. That is ministry. Amen. You don't know how much you bless someone else just to tell them, oh, I'll carry those bags for you. You see them struggling. That's not a big deal. You're just carrying the bags for them to their car because they have too much to carry. It doesn't take a lot. Amen? I saw a post from uh, Roger yesterday from Church at the Gate, I believe, and he shared a story about this new preacher came into town. He got a new church, and he's trying to figure out what's going on in the community. He went downtown on a bus. He caught a bus, went downtown, paid his fare, and he ended up with extra. The change the driver gave him back was extra. So he sat there. It was 25 cents. And he's like, I need to get this back. I need to let him know he over... You know, he gave me back too much change. This other voice, like, God is blessing you. Don't give it back. Appreciate the extra. And it just bothered him that he had this extra 25 cents that he knew it wasn't his that was accidentally given back to him. And so he still has these two voices. Give it back. Take it as a blessing. Give it back. Take it as a blessing. As he was getting off the bus, he turned to the bus driver and he said, you gave me too much change. Here's your 25 cent. He said, are you the new pastor in town? He said, yes, I am. He said, I've been looking for a church. And I thought I recognized you. I intentionally gave you 25 cent just to see what kind of character you have. Just to see. Would you keep it or would you return it? The world is looking at us. He said, I'll be at church next Sunday. I've been looking for someone with integrity. And you showed up. Amen. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. That's what ministry is about. Being the hands and feet of Jesus in the earth realm. Showing who God is to the, in the most unlikely situations. Yeah. The world is watching us. What would we do with the gifts that we have? I recall a time months ago I had shared with one of our uh, uh, members, partners, that, you know, I really had a heart to take in a homeless person and take them to the motel, get them washed up, cleaned up, treat them to a nice meal, and do all that stuff. I had that idea 20, 30 years ago, and I, I never did anything with it. But I believe Pastor Sharon said, if you don't do something with what he told you to do for someone else, 
That prayer will be answered, amen? And it'll be a strike against you that he asked you to do it and you just shook your head and kept on going, amen? And so the Lord put it on this person's heart to actually, she called me, she's like, I did it. I didn't know really what I did it was because this is like a six month time frame since the story was told until this situation happened. This person actually went and got a homeless person out of the rain, soaking wet, in their car. Can you imagine that? Would that be you? Not only did she take her from the street, wet, soaking wet, don't want to say, but soaking wet, put her in the car, didn't take her to Motel 6, took her to her home, took her to her home, allowed her to have a bubble bath as long as you want. Gave her some shoes. Let her choose the perfume that she would like to take with her. Not just spray it, but you choose whichever one you like. You like Coach, you like Prada, you like Gucci, which one you want, whichever one you want, you're welcome to it. That's ministry. That is what God is calling us to. Not to put down someone else for not doing what they're supposed to do. While you're putting them down, you could be helping someone. Let's use our time wisely and invest in kingdom work. Amen? To help that person. Why that person's uh, button always falling off? Because they haven't met you that can help them sew it on. Amen? Amen? Why that person's shoe heel always broken? Because they haven't met you to show them where there's a shoe fixer. They don't even know that there's such a thing. It's amazing that the things that you know can be a blessing to someone else. God has put it in my heart many times. I've seen someone that their purse was tattered and torn and I wanted a new purse. The Lord would not let me buy me a new purse until I went and purchased one for them. They didn't ask me, but I was moved with compassion when I saw it. Let the church be the church. Not a country club. I want us to, us, collectively. I mean, I challenge you even today. I'm looking for an opportunity to be a blessing to someone else. Who wants to join me? Amen? I'm looking for an opportunity. Maybe you can't buy them a meal at Eddie V's. I don't suggest you start there. (laughs) But maybe at McDonald's. Maybe buy an extra burger, just give it to somebody. There's people that have been a blessing to me that just stood out the, at, outside the restaurant and gave them just the rolls. God loves you. That person may have been thinking about taking their life today. And they just heard a word that God loves you. Just showing up. Just to listen. Some people just need someone to listen. I don't want you to solve my problem. But I just want you to hear it. I've been treated so badly by so many people. I just want someone to hear my side of the story. Will you show up for him? That's what he's calling us to do. That's honoring the gift. You're preloaded with everything that you need. It's now it's about activation. Just turn on the switch. It's already in there. All you add on is the anointing. That anointing, you add that anointing, you're a powerful piece of work. Amen? God would get the glory out of that. And that's all he asks is for us to go out and compel them to come in. Intentional. In Luke 14, 16, we're not going to go through that whole story, but he talked about the person that had a meal. He had a feast, and he invited those to come in. And everyone that he invited is like, I just got married. I can't come. I just had a baby. My wife just had a baby. I got a new job. They had all these excuses of why they couldn't come. What did he say? He said, well, get out of here and go and get those in the street. The sick, the infirm, the disadvantaged, the unchurched, the unloved, the unholy, go get them because I have a meal for them. We have the word of God for those. This is a meal. Go get them. Share the story. Nobody wants to listen to you in the, your spirit influence. Go find some new folks. There's new folks. 
There's new folks that haven't heard the gospel all over the place. Let's not get weary in our well-doing, but let us be about the work of the ministry outside these four walls. I'm leaving here today looking for someone to be a blessing to. Who else wants to do that? We don't have opportunities. 2024, we don't do more. You say, well, we do a lot already. Who do we do it for? 98%, we do it for us. 24, we're going to do more for them and compel them to come in. Not necessarily see the faith. It's okay if they don't come to see the faith international. Amen. As long as they get into the kingdom, as long as they get into the family, as long as they are experiencing the love of God. Amen. God will fill this place. I remember Amy said, dig a hole. He said, you dig the hole, he'll fill it. We're not worrying about filling this place. We're worried about kingdom. Amen. Filling up the kingdom. Because when the church down the street, when they get others, maybe they won't go there, maybe they'll come here. We only want who God sends here, amen? We're not asking for everybody. There's enough for everybody's house to be full. Amen. But we want people at the table. Invite them to the table, amen? That table of the Lord, amen? Will you honor the gift and talent that he has given you by investing it in the kingdom of God, in someone else's life, in someone else's dim situation. We speak life in dim situations. Amen? Did you get something out of this? Amen. Well, thank you online. If you join us on this morning, we pray that you heard something. There's just a little nugget that will give you an insight of how good God is and how much he has already put inside of you to give him glory. If you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we would not want this opportunity to pass you by. It's real easy. If you want to do this, just close your eyes and repeat this simple prayer after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Lord, I want you to be head of my life. Lord, I repent. And I accept your salvation. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that simple prayer, something amazing happened. We're excited for you here at See the Faith International. And heaven is rejoicing. They're throwing a big party just for you. Now, this is just the beginning. Now you need to take it a step further. Get into a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching community where the others will show you how to walk out this Christian faith. If you're here in the Kansas City area, we would love to uh, walk with you through this. Send us a note in any type of form that you can, and we will be absolutely astonished to be able to bless you and walk aside you as you grow into the knowledge of who God is. Amen? Amen. Join us next week at this same place and this same meeting, and have a blessed week. Amen? Amen. Amen.